All right, I want to talk to you today about why Christians should support a full-time ministry. All right, I'm going to give you the scriptures for this. Uh, you go to a lot of churches and church buildings and things, and you'll hear the giving sermons all the time. Um, I have only done, I think, one uh, or two actual sermons going through the scriptures where it talks about supporting full-time ministry. And um, I don't do it very much, but I'm going to do one today. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Reading through the, our, the book of 2 Corinthians here the other day and came across this chapter and um, just thought I should read it just to give you some understanding of why you support men in ministry. All right. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 1. For as touching the ministering to the saints, it is superfluous for me to write to you. For I know the forwardness of your mind, for which I boast of you to them of Macedonia, that Achaia was ready a year ago, and your zeal hath provoked very many. Yet have I sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this behalf, that as I said, ye may be ready. Lest haply if they of Macedonia come with me, and find you unprepared, we, that we say not ye, should be ashamed in this same confident boasting. Therefore I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you and make up beforehand your bounty, whereof ye had noticed before that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as of covetousness. In other words, Paul is bragging on them, saying, hey, they really were giving a lot to the ministry. They really are, are their zeal is provoking very many. These were people that were actually very good supporters of Paul's work. That's what's going on here. And he's saying, you know, I'm going to bring some people from Macedonia and I've been bragging about you. And when I come, I'd like to make sure I'm going to send some brethren ahead so that you don't look stupid here. Um, I want you to be able to have bounty there, some money that you can give to the ministry of the saints. I mean, what better way to spend your money than in the work of the Lord? You see somebody that's printing Bibles and uh, you say, hey, I'd like to give some money towards that. I'd like you to be able to print more Bibles. You see a man that's full-time ministry and he's getting the word out and he's preaching in ways that men in church buildings don't preach. You say, I'd like to give money to that. I'd like to keep that man going. Verse 6, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. The corrupt Pentecostal charismatics come out and they say, well, if you see that, that sowing and reaping, that law of sowing and reaping, it's talking about if you sow to a, a ministry, then you'll reap bountifully. You will prosper in this life. Uh, that's not what's being talked about there. Uh, there's a sense in which God will bless you in this life. I do believe in that. But not on the level that the charismatics say. You know, uh, a guy like Kenneth Copeland or somebody like that, you know, God's given me a $27 million jet, and if you keep giving money to this, you can have a jet too someday, you know, or something, Creflo Dollar and all these other guys. That's what they tell people. The more you give to this ministry, the more God's going to bless you with physical wealth down here. That's not what's going on. It's talking about spiritual blessing. When you get somebody that says, hey, I see whatever ministry out here, a Bible-believing ministry, and I want to give and support that ministry. God will provide for you in this life, absolutely. But you're going to be reap, reaping spiritual things that you yourself aren't doing. Okay? Some guy says, uh, I feel called of the Lord to go to Africa to minister to some tribe out there that's never heard the word of God. Well, you look and you say, well, I can't go to Africa. I can't go and do the same thing. And the guy says, well, you know, yeah, I've spent all these years studying their language and studying their culture. Well, I can't do that but I'd like to help. I know you're going to be doing a lot of great things for the Lord there, so I'd like to be able to help you. Well, how do you help? You support them. You sow bountifully, you see. You say, uh, just to give you an, an example here of sowing and reaping, the law of sowing and reaping. Um, hey, corn prices, all this flooding in the Midwest uh, this earlier this year, um, corn prices are going to soar. And I have some land Hey, you know what? I think I'm going to sow a lot of corn. Why? Because there's a shortage, I can reap a lot of money. You see, that's what's being talked about there. You're sowing and reaping. You sow, you support a ministry, a biblical ministry, and you can reap 
rewards in heaven. I can't reap the rewards of some missionary in Africa uh, because I've gone over and done the same thing. I can't say, hey, I'm going to be a missionary and I'm going to be a preacher and I'm going to print Bibles and I'm going to print gospel tracts and I'm going to do all this work. There's not enough time. God hasn't called me to do four, five, six different ministries. But if you sow money into those ministries, if you say, I'm going to give some to that ministry and give some to this ministry, then you will reap rewards for helping them out when you get to heaven. That's what the Bible teaches. A lot of people, there's going to be a lot of Christians in heaven that have a very big bank account down here on the earth that the Antichrist gets and very little bank account up there. Verse 7, Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Did you know that the 10% tithe has no scriptural basis at all for a New Testament Christian? Oh, you got to give 10% of your money. Chapter and verse, please. It's not in there. I have never, ever said that anybody needs to give 10% to King James Video Ministries. Never. Okay? And I never will. Why? Because it's not in the Bible. The Bible says it's not of necessity. You see? That missionary that's going to go to Africa, I don't have a necessity to give to that guy. But if I do it cheerfully, Hey, there's a, I was going to buy that other vehicle over there. I was going to buy this. I was going to invest my money in the stock market or some kind of thing like that. But I'd rather give my money to that guy in ministry. I've listened to him. I've, I've watched him. He's not, he didn't pull in in some limousine or something, and he's going to fly in his own private jet over to Africa to be a missionary, moochinary, more like it. No, 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 this is a humble man. This is a very humble ministry. They don't have some multi-million dollar building in California or something in the rich neighborhood that they're trying to get people's money. No, no. They don't have some huge big church building someplace that they're trying to pay off. No. You look and you say, I want to invest my money. I want to give to somebody, to some ministry out there. You know, and people are going to say, oh, you know, you're asking for it. You don't have to donate to this ministry. Okay? I'm not saying of necessity. People that have donated to this ministry... We pray for the Lord's blessing, and it's between them and God. I don't ever talk about, oh, so-and-so gave us this much, and so now I can be their friend or something. No, no. This ministry is here today. I mean, I've, because of God's people giving to the ministry and supporting this ministry, uh, we want to go forward. We want to be able to make more videos and, and get into other things, maybe books and gospel tracts eventually, but we just don't have the money for it right now. We don't have the resources for it right now. That's something that could happen in the future. But uh, only if God's people decide to, to give to this ministry. If you don't want to give to this ministry, give to somebody else. I'm not going to twist your arm. I'm not going to lie to you about the scriptures and say you need to give 10%. Okay, but let's continue here. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Hey, you have a lot of money, and you say, hmm, I'm going to invest this in the spiritual stock market. I'm going to give some to the missionary. I'm going to give some to the Bible publisher. I'm going to give some to the preacher. I'm going to give some to this person here, and that person there, and whatever else. And they start to prosper. And somebody gets saved as a result of that ministry. And somebody turns to the King James Bible as a result of that ministry. Somebody gets straightened out on doctrine as a result of that ministry. You know what you're doing? You are multiplying the seed that you have sown. Not so that you can, oh, look at me, I'm a Kenneth Copeland follower. And, and uh, now I'm going to have, you know, I'll pray for my finances. You know, I, I've seen some of this nutty charismatic stuff, you know. You give us so much and we'll pray over your finances, you know. We'll put our special blessing on, the, on your bank account and it'll grow unexpectedly or something. That's not what it, at all what it's talking about. You can only do so many ministries as a Christian. You can only have so much ability to witness to people. How do you then increase the seed of your sowing, your, your righteous giving, so to speak, your rewards in heaven? How do you increase that? By giving financially to ministries that you see are doing the work of the Lord. And not just sitting there and just absorbing all that money and getting rich off of it. Verse 8. 
Um, verse 11, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving to God. For the administration of this service not only supplieth the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. Whilst by the experiment of this ministration they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ, and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men. Liberal distribution. Let me get real personal here, Christian. Are you practicing liberal distribution to godly ministries? Or are you saving up for things of the world? It's okay to save money. Certainly it's okay. Uh, I recommend people save up money and buy land or whatever else and build for yourself and whatever else. Um, but if you're trying to amass a fortune, it can be wiped out like this. Number one, it will be when the catching up happens, it's going to be left here. But uh, what is it going to mean in heaven? Just something to think about. Do you have, can you say that you've done some liberal distribution unto ministries out there, good ministries? Verse 14, And by their prayer for you, which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you. Thanks be unto God for His unspeakable gift. God gave you the gift of salvation. Wouldn't you like to see other people receive that gift? I hope so. Go next to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. The two, it's interesting, the two biggest uh, portions of the, your New Pauline epistles that talk about giving is it's both written to the Corinthians, the most carnal people that, that uh, Paul wrote to. Uh, why? Well, because I don't think any, many of the other churches had a problem with it. <laughs> kind of interesting. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 <clears throat> am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are not ye my work in the Lord? If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you. For the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord. Um, the way that you can prove that, that the Lord has called me into being a Bible-believing preacher is by the amount of people out there whose lives have been changed by watching this ministry. Um, you people out there, I, I would have quit a long time ago if the Lord had just simply said, hey, there's no fruit coming from this ministry or whatever else. But a lot of you have been, been saved by this ministry. A lot of you have been turned to the King James Bible by this ministry. A lot of you have been straightened out on prophecy, on dispensationalism, on your health. And I thank the Lord for that. I'm not trying to take any glory for that. But I'm saying, hey, have you been helped by this ministry? So Paul's saying here to the Corinthians. Verse 3, My answer to them that do examine me is this, Have we not power to eat and to drink? I'm going to get back to that as we continue. But uh, there's a lot of people that examine me. A lot of people that uh, talk about, you know, I, I come out with my vehicle testimony and people say, you know, how many, just how many vehicles has he had over the years? Well, a lot of them because I buy junk vehicles. <laughs> You know, I don't buy brand new vehicles that last me for 10 or 20 years. I live in a northern area where they put calcium chloride on the roads in the wintertime and all kinds of other chemicals. Vehicles rot out. Vehicles are destroyed. I have to get another one. <laughs> you know, I'm not, you know, driving Lamborghinis and Porsches and, and limousines ferrying me and my wife and my son around. We drive old clunkers. Um, as far as the places that we live, we live, you know, pretty poor. Uh, why? so that I can help people out, out there. I'm not all about money. I don't have some big mega church building that you have to help pay for. Think about that when you examine me. You say, well, I don't know. I, you know I've had people, they say, well, I still watch you, brother, but I got to give my money to other people. I want to just support other ministries. Okay, are they worth it? Are they getting people saved? Are they getting people straightened out? Go ahead, you can examine me. Does anybody else preach in the way that I preach? I'm not bragging. I'm stating facts. Okay? Simple. Verse 5. How we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles, and as the brethren of the Lord and Cephas? Or I only and Barnabas, have not we power to forbear working? Oh, there's no scripture for, for full-time ministry. You just read it right there. Forbear working. In other words, we're not going to work. We're not going to have secular jobs. 
We're going to be doing ministry full time. Why? Because there's a great need. You know? Um, I oftentimes have done some secular work on the side. Why? Well, because I see that the bunch of people that watch the videos and things are getting spiritually glutted and they just sit around at the spiritual feed trough and just get fatter and fatter and fatter, to be quite frank. And uh, I think, you know, maybe it's time I take a little bit of a break sometimes. But some, you know, the Lord will bring in some other thing. And why don't you preach on this? One of you will send me. I mean, the vast majority of the, the, the time of being in ministry has been people's suggestions out there. Not even scriptures and whatever else the Lord puts in my mind. It's been mostly the, the body of Christ that's written to me and said, Hey, brother, could you do a sermon on this? Hey, what would you, how would you answer this? Or how would you answer that? That's been the majority of this ministry. Um, that's, what's, that's why I'm still here. But if the Lord eventually says, hey, they, they've heard enough. And there's all these people out there that are just swine. Don't cast your pearls before them anymore. Secular work. I'll go right back to secular work. It was a lot easier. <laughs> you know? Talked about that before. But I have power to forbear working. God has blessed this ministry. I've been able to continue for years and years and years. How much longer? I don't know. But look at verse 7. Who goeth a warfare any time at his own charges? Who planteth a vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof? Or who feedeth a flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? Okay? Let me explain that. Uh, Brother Brian, he's out there. He's going to fight our battles for us. He'll, let the, he'll take the attacks from the Catholics, he'll take the attacks from the Jesuits, and he'll take the attacks from the atheists and from the, all the different people out there. Just get slammed and just attacked and people just, you know, stealing my work and, and all this other stuff. He'll take all that stuff. He's out there going to warfare, but I don't want to support the ministry. It'll be all right. He'll just kind of have to do something there, you know. Just keep bringing the videos out, brother, but, but you know, you don't need to... You know, I don't, I don't really need to support that. Why don't you get out and do the fighting? You know? You get out there and start to fight these battles. I've had people say to me, uh, Brother, man, if, if, if I preach the kind of things that you preach in my country, I'd be in jail. Yeah, I know that. I know that. I'm very well aware of that. Um, I'm in war. Spiritual war. And I've seen a lot of brethren that try to get into full-time ministry and all of a sudden they get taken down and taken down hard. You don't know what it's like to be in full-time ministry. It's not an easy thing. But uh, you don't send a soldier out and just say, uh, here's a squirt gun and I want you to go take out the uh, general over there of the enemy's army. Uh, try it out. Hopefully it'll work for you. You don't do that. You say to that soldier, we'll give you the best equipment. And I don't mean, you know, $27 million jets and Kenneth Copelandism. Okay, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, you know, you make sure that he's fed. You make sure that he has a good weapon. You see? That's what Paul is writing about there. You say, well, I, I, I don't know. Do you want to do what I do? Do you want to make the videos? Do you want to answer people's questions? Do you want to be in this position? You say, no. Okay, then support me so that I can continue to do this. I'm going to talk very plainly, very bluntly in this message. I don't say this stuff very much, you know. And you say, oh, I've heard other things and I've seen the videos where people cut up your videos and make you look bad and whatever. Okay, then don't support the ministry. And do me another favor, don't watch the ministry. You go out, you do your own thing. You're some holy preacher, apostle, whatever else. You don't need me and whatever. You don't need this ministry. Then go do your thing, okay. It's just that simple. You know, the day comes that I start bragging about my new jet and my new 20,000 acre building or whatever, or 20,000 acre, 20,000 square foot building, you know, and, and all this other stuff. Okay, then stop supporting the ministry. But uh, that's not what I'm about. But let's continue here. Verse 8, Say I these things as a man, or saith not the law the same also? For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Doth God take care for oxen? Or saith he it altogether for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that he that ploweth should plow in hope, and that he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of his hope. You know, it's a real frustrating thing when you're in ministry and nobody cares. Nobody wants to support you. 
That's one of the hardest things that there is. You're out there trying to work for the Lord and there's just nobody that even cares. And you see Christians talking about, you know, oh, uh, I wonder who we could support. I wonder, uh, you know, I'd like to think about getting this house or I'd like to think about, the, you know, all this stuff out there. All these things. And you're over there and you're struggling. And I'm not talking to, I, I'm not talking to anybody in particular. I'm not trying to rebuke anybody that it's in my mind or whatever else. I'm just putting this thing out there. General truth. If it hits you, whatever. Okay? I want you to think. I want you to, to consider these things so that you don't get up to heaven with uh, empty pockets, so to speak. Get up there and have some rewards waiting for you. You know, support ministries that are doing things that you can't do, as I've been saying. It's just that simple. Verse 11, If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? I would think no, but some people apparently think yes. Verse 12, If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Um, would I have a right to monetize my channel? I put in the time, I put in the effort. I'm not some, you know, uh, silly billy just uh, sit, standing there in front of some stupid whiteboard with poor camera lighting and whatever else. I put out high definition video. I put out quality video. We travel to quality locations and, and everything else. I work hard. Um, do I have a right to monetize my channel? Yeah, but I'm not going to do it. You know why? Because of what Paul just wrote there. Um, Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. It's a hindrance to the gospel of Christ to monetize your channel. I fully believe that. And quite frankly, it's a hindrance to the gospel of Christ to take money from certain professing Christians. I have sent back donations to people. There are certain people that have sent their nations to me and I know who they are and I know what they're about. I don't want their money. That's what Paul's saying. Paul's not saying, we don't use the power of, of, of taking money from other people. Uh, yes, he did. He was supported by other churches. But he's saying to the Corinthians, you people got some serious issues. I don't want your money. And some secular, you know, People come along or whatever else, and they said, hey, you know, we're with the Roman Colosseum. We'd like to support you or something. And Paul would say, nope, sorry. That's just going to hinder the gospel of Christ. I don't want your money. That's all he's saying there. He's not saying you shouldn't take, be supported as a Christian preacher. He'd be contradicting what he just previously was saying. It would make no sense. <clears throat> Verse 13, do you know or do you not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple? And they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar. Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. You know the quickest way to see if a man of God is real or not? Is if he just falls flat on his face. Starts preaching a false gospel. Starts preaching a false gospel. The Lord's going to see to it that down you go. Okay? They say, oh, what about the Catholic Church? Yeah, I know. People come up with all these little loophole arguments and what about this, what about that, and all this other stuff. Uh, the Bible has a purpose for the Catholic Church. It's Mystery Babylon in Revelation 17 and 18. Okay? I'm not saying that, you know, the Catholic Church is false, so they should have fallen a long time ago. God has a purpose there for them. But I've seen some false ministries out there, and they have fallen because they're false. God's not for them. Um, verse 15 I think is where we're at but I have used none of these things neither have I written these things that it should be so done unto me for it were better for me to die than that any man should make my glorying void like I said sometimes you have to do that sometimes you don't want to take money from certain groups I would rather die than take money from Google I don't want their stupid ads on my videos and if you see ads on their videos it's because I have music in the video and they're ignoring the fact that I have the rights it's royalty-free music. I paid for the rights. I have a license to use it. And YouTube ignores that fact and puts ads on my videos. And I say, please take the ad down. And they, we play this little game over and over for years and years now. They take the ads down, and then they put them back up again after a little while. I just get tired of it after a while. 
My channel has never been monetized and never will be monetized. I would rather die than to take money from Google for preaching the gospel. I'll say it that way. If I ever do a secular channel or something like that, ever do secular work, come out as a woodturner again or something, I start putting up secular videos on some other channel, okay, fine. That's secular. Ministry? Nope, don't want your money. Verse 16, For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. What is my reward then? Verily, that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. How many of my videos do I make a charge for? You say, well, what about your external hard drive? Think, yeah, it's, it's a separate thing where people say, I'd like to have all your videos on some kind of a, you know, whatever external hard drive. Okay, I'll sell the external hard drive. And I think it's like less than a dollar per video on there, you know. And again, you don't have to buy it. Those videos are available other places all over the Internet and things like that. Okay. <laughs> And I'm putting labor into the thing there and whatever else, okay? But the vast majority of my videos are for free on YouTube. The gospel that I preach, it's, I'm making it without charge. Verse 19, For though I be free from all men, in other words, I don't have to care what people think, yet have I made myself servant unto all that I might gain the more. I try to answer people's questions. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without law as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Always watch out, by the way, for a little side note here. Always watch out for professing Christians that try to say, we have to be like the world to win the world. You know, when in Rome, do as the Romans. That's not scripture. Okay. What they're trying to corrupt is verse 22 there, where it says, I am made all things to all men that I might be all, by all means save some. They're trying to say, well, you have to be like the world to win the world. No, uh, 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 that's not what it's saying. Okay. He says, I am made all things. God is putting him through a whole lot of different stuff so that he can witness to people. God has put me through a lot of things. God has put my wife through a lot of things. Why? So that we can minister to people. God put us into this position. Verse 23, And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all but one receiveth the prize? So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I pr have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. How many men of God, quote unquote, have become castaways? A lot of them. They quit. One of the biggest things is on the... Uh, catching up before the time of Jacob's trouble. A lot of men that once stood for what would be called the pre-trib rapture have backed off. They quit. They're not looking for Jesus Christ anymore. They've come up with all kinds of things and, well, we're going to get to see the Antichrist and I think we'll be here for three and a half years. But <clears throat> um, I'm still in line with Scripture. No, you're not. No, you're not. That's one of the dumbest things that you can believe in, that the body of Christ is going to be here to see the Antichrist. 24 elders are in heaven and... You know, 10,000 times 10,000 angels and thousands of thousands round about the throne. There's Christians in heaven before the Antichrist is revealed in Revelation chapter 6. There's not even an argument. And yet people still say, well, I don't know. I, I, I think that maybe if you look at Second Thessalonians and if you compare it to Matthew chapter 24, and you, you know, Christians are in heaven before the Antichrist is revealed. Duh. Okay. The purpose of that time period is the time of Jacob's trouble, not the time of the church's purification. Duh. <laughs> it's not that hard. And yet how many guys have called themselves men of God and they depart from that? Brian Donovan, Pensacola, Bible Baptist Church, whatever. He departed from it. Mike Hoggard, other very big issues with that man. He departed from it. 
a lot of these guys. Oh, I'm a King James Bible believer, defender of the King James Bible. And then they fall away like that. Ken Hoven, Jesuit, but you know, whatever. <laughs> Mr. Uh, the purpose of CSE Ministries is the ecumenical agenda. In his affidavit, court affidavit. You can watch our video on that if you don't know about that issue. But uh, finally, let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 5. And yes, I name names. I'm not afraid to do that. Most others are. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17 through 20. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. Again, I'm just talking plainly, okay? Can you find another ministry out there that has labored more in word and doctrine than this one? Um, you say yes. Okay, then support them. You know what I mean? Support them with your money. I got some kind of bug that I think just bit me in the back of the neck or something like that. So I'm not, I'm not nervously scratching back here. I'm, I'm scratching because something just was on my neck. <laughs> Oh, the joys of outdoor preaching. I need, I, we need to raise money for a $10 million church building that I can preach to the nations with, with uh, CCTV cameras and 4K uh, uh, live streaming. Blah, blah. <laughs> I had to say it. So I'm, I'm smiling. See, I'm smiling. I get so sick and tired of people. You don't ever smile in your videos. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, you, do you really want some goofus that just stands there and just smiles all the time and just says, okay, turn in your Bibles. Da, 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 da. I mean, what in the world? Do you think I'm Barney the dinosaur or something? You people. <laughs> I have joy in my heart, and that doesn't mean I have to smile all the time. All right? I just got to say that. <laughs> Verse 18, For the Scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn. And the laborer is worthy of his reward. Against an elder receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. Them that sin rebuke before all, that others also may fear. Um, I'm not above rebuke. Okay? Um, but when you examine me, and you examine my ministry, this ministry here, and please understand, when I say my ministry, I'm not trying to take it from the Lord or whatever else. But, you know, uh, Paul says, you know, be followers together of me. You know, even as I also am of Christ. You know, he's 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 not saying, well, you're a Paul, you know, Paulian or something like. No, he's saying, be a follower of me. Okay, God has committed to me a ministry. It's King James Video Ministries. I'm not a YouTuber or a vlogger or whatever else, and that's all I've ever done. Uh, this is a full time ministry. Okay, um, that's why I say my ministry. Please understand that I'm not saying that out of pride. All right. Uh, it's very important to get that. Um, but if, you know, examine this ministry. Um, you give money to this ministry, uh, we live a very, very simple life. Very simple life. And I strive to be able to show truths from the Scripture, answer people's questions, preach the true gospel, the gospel that produces a changed life, defend the King James Bible, uh, defend proper biblical doctrine, dispensationalism, and the catching up before the time of Jacob's trouble. There are a lot of things we do here. Um, and you look at our lives. We live uh, off-grid in Maine. Our ministry office is a $16,000 old house in a small town. Um, you're not going to find many ministries like this. Uh, you want to give your money to, to other ministries and things? Um, you know, okay, that's between you and God. Um, but make sure you're not wasting your money. Okay? Right now, the economy is in trouble. And it would be foolish to say um, the new car market is really faltering right now. I, I just heard, uh, not new cars here, but I'll just say this. John Deere Corporation is laying off a whole bunch of employees. Um, was it GM, GM, I think, General Motors, has just shipped out to China. You know, they sold out to China. Um, I don't think you want to invest in things that are not going to give you a good return on your investment. Um, you give to some local Baptist church right now, the Bible says that there's a falling away that comes. Uh, not a getting better in terms of your church is going to get more people. I remember, you know, going to these church buildings and it's always this, 
this hope of, you know, we're going to have this revival and it's going to come back and we're going to see it like the glory days and we're going to fill up all these pews again and everything else. No, you're not. No, you're not. Uh, you're living in a little opium pipe dream there. Um, you do well to give to a ministry that is doing things for the Lord. Um, if you want to sit on your money and just, just say, I want to get a big fat bank account that can be wiped out. Okay, whatever. Uh, you say, I don't feel called to give to this ministry. I think you're asking for money. Okay, then don't. It's <laughs> just that simple. It really is just that simple. Um, people that have given to this ministry over the years will receive rewards in heaven. I guarantee you that. I can't tell you how many letters we've gotten over the years of people whose lives have been changed. Um, there's very few other ministries out there that are getting the devil as upset as we are. Um, I thank the Lord for that. The Lord's put me into a position I never thought I was going to be in growing up. Um, somebody would have told me you're going to be known internationally someday and, and um, you know, really stir things up. I would have said, yeah, right. <laughs> Not going to happen. But here I am. Um, my wife does a lot of the research for some of the videos that, that we put out and some of the, the teachings and things. Um, how many ministries are like that? You say, well, you know, I, I've, I've found other ones. Then I support them. But don't get to heaven with some fat bank account back down here on the earth. Okay? That's all that's going on here. Okay? Support the ministry if you feel like it. If you don't, go someplace else. Okay? Because um, if you're watching this ministry and you're just getting blessing after blessing after blessing and you don't care about seeing it continue, um, us, you know, continue in terms of being financially supported, that's a problem. That's going to talk plainly. Just going to talk bluntly today. I get so sick and tired of people attacking me on an issue that I really don't even make a big deal about. <laughs> you know? Um, so that's going to be it. I uh, just wanted to make a video about this. Um, You've been praying about it and just felt the Lord wanted me to say something on this issue. Uh, you know, we are putting a thing at the end because I get, I, I get comments, you know, people say, how do I support this ministry and whatever else? So we're going to have the new little ending at the end of each video. If you don't like it, skip it. You get to the end of the video, I say thank you for watching or see you in the next video. Shut it off. You don't have to watch the thing. Um, and I just want to thank everybody out there that has supported us over the years that... Uh, has provided for us. Um, we do our best to live as frugally as possible. Uh, we don't just go out and blow people's money and waste money and whatever. I mean, you can see that the way we live. I mean, <laughs> you know, where's the big multi-million dollar building if I'm such a all about money? Um, we drive old vehicles. Literally right now, um, our one vehicle that we have, we have multiple vehicles here because you have to. I mean, um, you can't just have one vehicle here. I mean, I guess maybe some people can if they live in town, but we live out in the country. I don't just drive a truck all the time because it's too bad on gas. Um, I need to go get construction materials. I'll drive my truck, you know, and I, literally my truck, I was told by the garage when I inspected it this past year, he said, you're going to want to take this truck off the road next year. It's not going to pass inspection again. It's too badly rusted. I mean, we literally had one of our shock mounts that had broken off and our, our rear shocks just flopping around back there. We didn't even know it. Um, it's crazy. Our other vehicle, both vehicles, everything we have is uh, over 100,000 miles. We don't have anything with less than 100,000 miles on it. You know, it's just, it's something there. You're never going to see me driving around a lim limousine or some kind of a fancy Cadillac or Mercedes or something like that. I'm not even interested in that stuff. Um, so I just wanted to say that because there's, there's a lot of false information out there and a lot of you are innocent and you don't know what to believe and I don't talk about it much. So, you know, when I don't talk about it, then rumors can really grow and people get all this, this disinformation and they think maybe it's true because he doesn't really defend it and whatever. I'm telling you the truth in this video, okay? So, um, and, and one other thing I'm just going to say and that is um, YouTube has kind of created a weird situation because, uh, you know, videos come out for free and that's fine and great and whatever else. But um, I think it, it leads people to a sense of entitlement where they think, you know, oh, I'm just owed this. And you end up forgetting, you know, that, uh, hey, that's a real guy here and he actually has things he needs to do and, and whatever else. And I need to su support this guy and, 
and whatever. Um, back when I was studying for the ministry, uh, I guess YouTube was there, but there were very few Bible believers on it. And um, I learned a lot from Peter Ruckman. And I didn't have very much money, but I'll tell you what, every cent that I could possibly afford, I gave to that ministry because um, I was learning. And I was buying videos and I was buying books. You can see it in some of my old videos where the stuff's behind me. And I, I put as much money as I could into that man's ministry. Um, and sent them donations and whatever else. And I don't talk about who I've donated to and whatever. Um, but, and I think that it's okay to be selling products like that. That's, that's fine. I used to. I used to sell DVDs. But um, now people have gotten so used to the thing of YouTube. And YouTube's paying them so I don't have to. YouTube doesn't pay us. We've never earned a cent from YouTube. So, uh, just to get that out there. So, uh, thank you to those who do support us, and um, I guess that's going to be it. So, uh, we will see you in the next video. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized, and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the Scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.